Good morning, and hey now, PASW staff, clients, and friends joining us. Um, welcome to Tuesday's class. We had a lot of fun looking at a man and a woman, your film scoring assignment. We're getting into the realm of foreign film scoring, right? So it's going to be a little bit a little bit tricky. So take a look at the scene and get it to me by, t by today, and we'll see it on Friday. Um, okay, we're going to talk about uh, a composer, pianist, that... Um, I'm very excited to get to because we mentioned his name a little bit before, but probably the most important romantic composer, um, one of the most romantic composers uh, of the 19th century. Today we'll be taking it real easy and nice because you're going to like this. This is very, very beautiful um, music, piano music that changed the world. Today we'll be talking about Chopin. So not Chopin, Chopin. He's Polish, uh, lived most of his life in Paris, but born, born in Poland uh, in 1810, okay? And he dies in 1849. So he only lives till 39 years old. He was sickly most of his life, uh, died of tuberculosis. And, um, but boy, what, what he contributed to music was amazing. So we're gonna look at his life and play some of his music and um, You'll uh, hear some of these pieces that are famous, and you'll you'll also see how much he's in, he influenced a lot of composers that we already have talked about. You guys already know him. Um, so let's let's look at Chopin's life. He wrote solely for the piano. There is a few other works that he did uh, concerto, but it always had the piano. And he wrote about two hundred works, and a hundred and. 69 of those are just for solo piano. So we're talking about somebody that, and he was a child prodigy. He performed his first concert when he was eight. And um, his dad was a musical genius and his mom also played piano. Um, and he's important because he's one of the first composers to write solely for the piano. So with Beethoven and Mozart, they, they wrote for the piano and they had their own piano sonatas, concertos and all that stuff. But they were more, they would write more for Beethoven totally, completely with the string quartets and the symphonies. Uh, Mozart did, did everything, operas. Chopin never did any operas, ballets or anything. He was completely just a solo pianist for the most part and a shy one at that. He was very shy and, and um, would only would like to perform just in the dark with candles or anything like that. He only performed about 30 times in his life in publicly. And those were, and he'd always tell the people at the salons or the parties to dim the lights because he didn't want, he didn't want, I don't know if it was a mood or if he was just shy, probably both. So, um, you know, a little eccentric, but most geniuses are. And this is the romantic period we're talking about. So let's look at our timeline. These are the other composers we've been looking at. He's kind of writing during Wagner's time, during the early to mid 19th century. So we got Mozart and Beethoven that we, we know all about. That's the classical period. By this time with Wagner and um, Chopin, we, we are in the romantic period, which is the 19th century. And then if you look a little bit further, we see the Debussy and Ravel people that we've talked about. Eric Satie should be in there too a little bit later. But this is a visual timeline of what, of who we're, who we're talking about and when he was alive and writing. Um, and he greatly influ influenced Debussy. I mean, a lot of other composers, but Debussy in particular was very fond of him. And he, 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 would, he, would, he invented piano pieces that weren't just exercises. They weren't just um, uh, uh, etudes where you would play little piano things Whereas composers would do that, but then they would orchestrate it for the for the orchestra, for an opera, for something grander. He made the piano its own instrument that could stand on its own as solo piano pieces. You know, now we have composers. Philip Glass comes out with a solo album, solo piano album. It's very common for that. But in the in the age of classical music, um, it wasn't really solo piano. I mean, Bach, you had keyboard solos. And that stuff, but I mean, his music sounds nothing like Bach, and that was hundreds of years before him. Uh, but mostly Tchaikovsky, Wagner, doesn't sound anything like that kind of music, because that's all grand opera, huge orchestrations. He's, he's, and it's not, it's not like Eric Satie. It's not, it's not music that sounds simple. It's very, 
it's very ex tricky, um, intricate piano music. It's very hard to play, but it also has um, a Polish feel. So he was very interested in mazurkas, and that's kind of um, folk-like, um, like a folk-like feel. Um, and that's what he brought differently into the romantic realm. And a mazurka is like a folk dance. And so you can hear some of that in, in his music. take these mazurkas that, that were, you know, Polish nationalistic mazurkas and these pieces in the salon, which were, you know, kind of small concert places, and he would write nocturnes, which are it's been mostly a piece that um, is inspired by evocative of the nighttime. He would take those things and put them into a concert hall. So do you remember who else did that with jazz? Who put jazz into the concert hall? George Gershwin brought jazz into the concert hall with Rhapsody in Blue in 1924, but that's the 20th century. This is what Chopin's doing, and that's this is his big contribution to making the piano a, just a, a larger instrument that stands on its own. That you know, And it's not like these songs were very long. I mean, they were, he kind of was writing sophisticated well just to make for this purpose let's just say pop songs in the sense because they were about three to five minute songs okay um they were short form and uh you know usually under 10 minutes so he's not writing anything that's where you're gonna again opposite of wagner you're not gonna be sitting through two intermissions you're just gonna be listening to sh you know short precise beautiful wonderful piano music and he made a really good living in Paris because he would, uh, royalty wanted to study with him, rich people wanted to, and so he made a really good living teaching private piano lessons. And of course he's famous for having the very, um, I don't know how tumultuous, uh, but you know, a relationship with George Sand, the writer, um, who is female, uh, of course, Arroya Dupin, and she was just as famous as Franck Moore, if not more than Balzac and Victor Hugo, uh, and of course, because, you know, it was unfortunate back then, she would, she'd use the pen name, George Sand, <clears throat> even though she was a woman. But they had a relationship for about 10 years, and he was very um, fond of her, to say the least. I mean, as we're hearing his music, they're, they're exquisite melodies. They're haunting. There's a lot of darkness, but there's also a lot of fun melodies. Um, that make it popular and, and fun to listen to. But like with Bud Powell with piano, remember he was he had light moments, but he'd also get very haunting dark moments um, as opposed to somebody, you know, like um, <clears throat> Ravel who would write piano music that was that felt like you were at the beach or felt like you were just underneath a waterfall that was beautiful. Chopin had elements of that, but he also had also elements of haunting music. And his style stayed the same for the most part. He's, he's different with other composers in the, in the sense that, um, not to say he didn't get better or develop, but for the most part at an, at an early age, his style remained the same during his youth and didn't really change throughout his life. Of course, he only lived till 39, so maybe it would have, but I think he established his voice very young and kept with it. And he asked, uh, he asked that his heart be removed after he died. Um, and so uh, it, his heart remains in Poland right now. Uh, I, I, uh, it's kind of creepy, but kind of cool. Um, and he said, uh, at the, uh, one of his quotes was, simplicity is the final achievement. After one has played a vast quantity of notes and more notes, it is simplicity that emerges as the crowning reward of art. Again, we talk about an artist that when it boils down to all these high-minded ideas, all these things we're talking about, piano, notes on a page, crazy stuff, he says simplicity is the final achievement. If you can make something simple, and that's what I try to do with these classes, 
we're talking about very crazy ideas and uh, intricate and philosophies. And I'm trying to sum, sum, you know, it's very, very hard to do this. But when it comes down to simplicity is one of the most beautiful things, because then we understand clearly, you know, so simplicity is the final achievement. So after all is said and done, it comes down to just, and life can be like that. Life is so hectic and all those things. But really, when you think of down to it, if we bait, bait, if we boil it down to just a simple thing, okay, we, we want to be happy and we don't want to die, really. Those are kind of the things in life that we want. But sim simplicity emerges as the crowning reward of art. Let's think about that the rest of the day. Love you and miss you. See you tomorrow.